Hello everyone, in this example we are going to find the reaction forces of the supports for the beam shown. So the first step in finding reaction forces is to draw a free body diagram. So finding the reaction forces is an equilibrium problem. So for free body diagram, I draw my beam, I remove all the supports, and I apply all the loads on the beam. So here we have 600 Newton. Here at point D we have 100 Newton. And then at point B I have 200 Newton. So these are the given loads and then I have two supports. Here A is a rocker. So you should be able to identify different supports based on their geometry. So I know I only have reaction forces in y direction because it's free to move in x. And then b is pinned, so that means that I have both reaction forces in y and x. So I have drawn the reaction force in x in uh, toward negative x. Can you tell why? Why did I draw it in negative x? Usually we don't know if the problem is complex, what would be the right direction of reaction forces. So you could assume any direction and if you find a negative value, that means that your assumption is incorrect. Uh, but here, because we, we have one force that has a component in positive x, there gotta be a force canceling that. And the only force would be this bx. So I know bx has to be in negative x. That's why I draw it that way but you can draw it in positive way and then you would get a negative value. So the dimension is two meter here, here is three meter, and then the end is two meter. So this beam, we are not neglecting the thickness of the beam. So we are assuming a thickness here for the beam and from the top to the middle with 0.2. That means that the X component of this force is also gonna create a moment because we have a moment arm now. So looking at the problem, the unknowns for us are the reaction forces, which are AY, we only had one reaction force at A, BX, and BY. We have three equilibrium equations we can solve uh, for the unknowns. Because we don't want to solve three equations and three unknowns simultaneously, so we look at the problem and if we could only include one unknown in our problem, then that makes it easier for us uh, to solve. So here, if I start with summation of forces in X direction equals zero, I have 600 here is going to create, it's going to have a component in x, so that would be 600 cosine 45 is towards positive x based on my coordinate. The problem didn't have a coordinate, so I have a choice to draw my own. bx equals 0, therefore bx would be 300 square root of 2 newton. Then I can write summation of forces in Y. So I start from the left and then I will go to, to right. So I start with AY, I have AY. Then my 600 Newton is gonna have a negative component and then the Y component would be sine 45. Then I have negative 100. Uh, then I have BY and then negative 200. So I'll always count the number of forces that I have in the equation to make sure that I haven't missed anything. So I say, okay, I have AY, one component, this is gonna have a component, two, three, four, five, and I have here one, two, three, four, five. So I have included everything. So I have AY and BY here. And then I have summation of moment. Then I have a choice of taking a moment equation about any point that I want. 
but you can see a lot of forces are happening at B. If I write a moment equation about point B, I get rid of all these three forces. So it makes my equation simpler and I'm less likely to make a mistake. So summation of moment about point B equals zero. So you always need to write about which point you are writing a moment equation. And then I assume counterclockwise to be positive. Uh, so moment about point B, I start here from 100. Then my fourth 100 is going to create a counterclockwise. So it's going to be positive. So that's 100 ne Newton times 2. Then my 600, the X component would be cosine 45. And it's going to create uh, a clockwise. So it's going to be a negative. So 600 cosine. Forty-five, and uh, the moment arm here would be point two. And then the same force is the vertical component is going to create a counterclockwise, so it's positive. Then I have sine forty-five. I'm for forty-five cosine and sine are the same, but they but I'm going to write it based on the angle. And the moment R here is 2 plus 3 would be 5. And then last but not least is AY that, that is creating um, clockwise. So that would be negative. So negative AY 7 equals 0. So looking at the equation, here, for summation of forces in Y, I had two unknowns. That's why I left it as it is. But summation of moment about point B, I only have AY as an unknown. So I can find AY. So AY would be here 319.49 Newton. And now that I have AY, I can go to my second equation and find BY. So three equation, three unknown, we solved all the unknowns. You can see all the values are positive. That means that the direction that we assumed is uh, correct. And in 2D equilibrium, you do not necessarily need to write these three equations, summation of forces X, Y, or moment. Sometimes we write two moment equation. It might be easier for us to uh, solve for the unknown. We wrote the moment equation by point B, to find AY, if we have all other forces, I can write a moment equation about point AY to find BY instead of writing summation of forces in Y. But at the end, we need to remember we only have three equations and we can solve for three unknowns.